Welcome to Cyber GMBC. God has remained faithful and has blessed us all to reach a brand new year with unknown opportunities and possibilities in ministry and beyond. We welcome you to the Cyber GMBC 2021 worship experience. Lord, we come now in the name of Jesus. We are thankful, O oh Lord, that you have allowed us to cross over into a brand new year, a year that is full of possibilities, a year that is full of opportunities, O oh Lord. And Lord, we thank you that you brought us over into 2021. 20 was mean to many of us, O oh Lord. But Lord, our testimony is that we made it anyway through your help and by your grace. And so, Lord, as we enter into this new year, Lord, we're asking for direction. We're asking for blessings, O oh Lord. We're asking for understanding, O oh Lord. Lord, we ask you to bless every aspect of our lives. Bless this nation, Lord. Bless this city, O oh Lord. Bless this county, O oh Lord. Bless this world, Lord. We need you, O oh Lord. We cannot make it without you. Lord, no matter what we try, no matter what we do, we are always dependent upon you. So, Lord, now as we come in the name of Jesus, I'm asking your blessings upon us, O oh Lord. All of us that have gathered here this morning, Lord, all of us that are listening, Lord, through the phone, O oh Lord, through the internet, O oh Lord, however we are engaged this morning, we're asking your blessings on us, O oh Lord. All the needs that are here at this virtual altar, Lord, you know them, O oh Lord. Many are sick, many are stressful, some are depressed, O oh Lord. Some are uncertain, O oh Lord. Some are discouraged, O oh Lord. Some are grieving. Some are anxious. Lord, we have some that are battling this virus. Some of, those, some of us don't know if we have it or not. We're waiting on test results. But Lord, ultimately, our trust is in you. Lord, there is a vaccine. But, Lord, we understand that only healing comes from you. So, Lord, I'm asking right now in the name of Jesus to bless everyone that's under the sound of my voice, everyone that can hear my voice, Lord. Reach out and address their situations, Lord, their circumstances, oh, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we're praying for our church, GMBC family. Lord, we're praying for our Cyber GMBC family, for all of our friends and those who stop in and visit with us, Lord, that they will be blessed on this day, O oh Lord. We glorify you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Meet our needs. Address our situations. Heal those that are sick. Touch those whose minds are confused, O oh Lord. We love you. We honor you, Lord. And again, Lord, we are thankful that you've allowed us to see a brand new year, Lord. Bless us in our efforts, O oh Lord. Bless our students, O oh Lord. Bless our parents, O oh Lord. Bless our workers, O oh Lord. Our various ministries that make up this church, O oh Lord. Our musicians, O oh Lord. All of those that make contributions to GMBC. We ask this in Jesus' name, amen and amen.
thank you for this opportunity to give to be a blessing Lord we ask you to bless that what we give be used to continually build your kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven Lord we thank you for this opportunity we ask now that you bless us keep us lead us and guide us in Christ's name we do pray amen and amen
Lord, we come now in the name of Jesus, asking your blessings upon this message, the first message of this brand new year, 21. Lord, you know the needs. So, Lord, I'm going to ask you to address them, Lord, through your word. And Lord, I ask you to take and use me as a vessel, an instrument, Lord, to share your word with these, your people. They will be listening in our virtual congregation, our virtual audience, O oh Lord. Lord, that you meet the needs as you would and as you have done when we were in person, Lord. Lord, you are everywhere. And so, Lord, we thank you for the message that we have now to meet even more. Lord, we ask for anointing, we ask for power, that this word will be relevant, that it will be real, that it will create a relationship, O oh Lord, for those that are lost, that they will find you, O oh Lord. We ask for anointing and power. Lord, I don't want to take anything for granted, so use me in spite of me, in spite of my thoughts, in spite of my words, take them and make them yours, that your word will be filled with anointing and with power that it will have the anointing to break yokes, to challenge hearts, souls, and minds. Ultimately, Lord, we want to be better after hearing this word than we were before. We ask for your power, your anointing. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. There is a word this morning coming from the letter to the Christians in Rome, the 8th chapter, 35th verse, and a few of the following reads this way. Can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? Does it mean that he would no longer love us if we have trouble or calamity? Or are we persecuted or hungry or desolate? destitute or in danger or threatened with death as the scriptures say for your sake we are killed every day we are being slaughtered like sheep no despite all these things overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us and I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today or our worries about tomorrow, not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. I'd like to use this passage of Scripture from which to preach this morning from the thought, the idea, comforting words for stressful times. Comforting words for stressful times. The understatement of the year already in its third day would be that these are some stressful times. So often, bad theology has made Christians to believe that once you come to Jesus, that all things will automatically fall into place. So often, we have been misled to believe that by simply joining a church, shaking the preacher's hand, that all will be great, grand, glorious from here on out. It's popular to have us believe that by simply accepting Christ into one's life, that all of your troubles are now over. Churches have increased all across this nation and have become mega by simply always singing a Christian lullaby that you have to believe that in this walk of faith that your trying times are over. They are feeding folks with the notion that sickness can't come your way. Divorce can't happen to your marriage. Disappointment can't dampen your spirits. Loved ones can't be taken prematurely out of your lives. And simply by naming and claiming things automatically will happen for you. All I can say this morning is that you've come to the right church this morning. Dr. D is not going to sell you some snake oil or pet rocks. In other words, I'm going to keep it real with you. 
Last year, 2020 taught us that even the church was not exempt from the effects of COVID-19 or Rona. This pandemic upended our world in March of last year, and we are now faced with a new strand in Colorado and California so far three days into 2021. And I recall when this pandemic first hit, I recall some pastors that was running to Psalms 91 and was running to the passage of the Passover, and they was trying to share with their people that this was only going to affect those that was um, outside of the church, and they tried to relate it to this pandemic. Uh, but the sad part is, is that in reality, in the Passover, God's people was spared the death of their firstborns, but in this pandemic, I've discovered that Christians have also died. Christians have also come and been infected by this virus. And so uh, these are stressful times. And I don't care who you are or where you live, these times are stressful. We are the, why are they stressful, Dr. D? Glad you asked. Well, the economic fallout from Rona has been major. And the GOP failed to approve a $2,000 aid check that 45 demanded. It's stressful because many Americans have been barely hanging on, and every little dollar could matter, but, in, but some in Congress should really care less about them as well as our state. It's stressful because we finally have a vaccine for Rona, but they are not properly being prepared to be administered to everyone efficiently. We are stressful because one batch of vaccines are made here in Michigan, and here in Michigan, we don't have enough for the folks that need to have it immediately. It's stressful because on this upcoming Tuesday, there's a runoff election in Georgia that will decide who controls the Senate. It's stressful because on Wednesday, Congress is supposed to officially accept the results from the uh, November's election, but several Republicans are on record rejecting results that Biden did win. It's stressful because there are rumors of potential attacks during the inauguration, which adds to the mental fatigue that has seen our world since March. And so I have to be honest and real with you that even as Christians, I've discovered that we are dealing in stressful times. And I've had to tell folks, uh, I've had folks tell me that for Christians, we are not really of this world, and this world's problems don't affect us. Really? Well, the last time I checked, Christians are also facing bankruptcies. Christians are also facing foreclosures. F Christians are also facing divorce, unemployment, being uninsured and underinsured. Christians are also affected by sickness. Their children also engage within the penal system. Their teenage uh, do kids become parents. Uh, oftentimes, Christians' children also drop out of high school. Christians have to also deal with low self-esteem. We have to deal with the concern about our pensions and our savings accounts. We have to deal with the possibility of being raped, robbed, shot, and murdered. Uh, we have to deal with Rona and its complications. In other words, what I'm saying, although we are to be up the, in this world but not of this world, the world problems still affect us. And all I'm trying to say this morning is that it is extremely important that you invite Jesus into your life. It's vital that you do connect with some local church and join into a church home where you will be free uh, and fed the true gospel of God. And think about it, this is the best time to join a church this time because right now, because most churches are virtually, you don't have to worry about ever being late for church. You don't have to ever worry about if I'm wearing the right thing for church. All you got to do is roll over and connect. And so there's no excuse for anybody not becoming a part of someone's church. Well, let me say this, my brothers and sisters, it's important that you join a church and not sit on the sidelines because active, become actively engaged in ministry. It's important, but as an informed and educated preacher with an earned doctorate degree, I must share with you that it is reckless, irresponsible, and bad theology to make you believe that if you are a Christian and accept Christ in your life, that you will never encounter some health challenges. And if you do, this means that you don't have enough faith. It would be irresponsible for me to tell you that you will never be in a situation where your money is funny, your change is strange, your credit won't get it. And if you do, it's because you don't have enough faith. It would be bad for me to tell you if you simply name it, 
that God will automatically claim it for you. And if it doesn't happen, it's because you don't have enough faith. It would be bad for me to tell you that God would automatically increase your territory when you haven't done nothing with the area God has already given you. And if you don't, it's because your faith is is not where it needs to be. It would be bad for me to tell you that you and your spouse won't go through some trying times that may lead to divorce, and if it does, it's because you don't have enough faith. It would be bad for me to tell you that you won't have to go downtown to see your son's sentence or to do some time or your daughter become a mother before she's ready, and if it does happen, it's because you don't have enough faith. It would be bad for me to tell you that you and your family are immune from Rona, and if you do end up catching it, it's because you didn't have enough faith. All I'm trying to say is that so often, faith is the reason uh, has been used as an excuse as to why things happen, but I'm going to keep it real with you this first Sunday of the brand new year that life happens. I don't care who you are. I don't care how big your Bible is. I don't care how many verses you can recite frontwards, backwards, and sideways, life will happen. Being a Christian does not give us some immunity to what affects society won't affect us. But being a Christian does give us an alternative response and reaction to when stressful times come. I like that. I need to say it again. Being a Christian does give us an alternative response and an alternative reaction to when stressful times come. Being a Christian does mean that our behavior does not have to be like other folks. We don't have to give up or feel like there is no use. I got to, I got to talking with Paul, and I said, Dr. Paul, there must be something that I can say to the wonderful folks of GMBC because we are in a brand new year, but we are facing some of the old challenges from the old year. I said, Dr. Paul, I know that some watch all those televangelists who were preaching prosperity a year ago. I don't know what they're preaching right now behind this pandemic. And I said, Dr. Paul, I have always been known to keep it real. Is there anything that I can share that will encourage them despite what they may hear over the internet or on television. He said, Dr. D, tell them that I've experienced more persecution after I came to Christ than I did before I came to Christ. I said, hold on. He said, I said, can you repeat that again? He said, Dr. D, tell them that I experienced more persecution after I came to Christ than I did before I came to Christ. He said, however, tell them, Dr. D, that life's challenges were much more sweeter with Jesus than they would have been without. He said, Dr. D, please share with them some comforting words for stressful times. So here we are. As we look at our text, our text this morning is tailored to teach us, it is poised to encourage us that even when things are not going according to our plans, uh, that God is still in control. I like this because Dr. Paul knows a little something about stressful times. It can make a difference when you hear from a person who's been there and done that. Dr. Paul wrote this letter to the church at Rome. Although he had never been there, he was aware of their situation. Dr. Paul was trying to give them the essentials of the Christian faith to help them grow and mature until he was able to get there. It would be some two years later that Paul would be able to visit Rome. He ended up under house arrest. However, before Paul made his third missionary journey that would include in visiting Rome, he had deacon sister Phoebe, who he talked about in the 16th chapter, personally carried this letter to Corinth to these Christians in Rome. Uh, from Corinth to these Christians in Rome. This letter was one of Paul's latter letters, although its placement is right behind the book of Acts. In this letter, Paul is realizing that following Jesus is no rosy parade. Paul is informing these Roman Christians that they can expect for some stressful times, but they don't have to become unglued because God has their backs. Who better than 
Paul to say a few words about stressful times. You remember about Paul, don't you? It was Paul who was blinded by a supernatural vision on the Damascus Road. It was Paul who was deserted by John Mark. It was Paul who blessed Peter out for his inconsistency. It was Paul who was rejected by his own people in Arcanium. It was Paul who was saved by an angry mob being let down the wall in a basket. It was Paul that was stoned at Lestra and left for dead. It was Paul who was in prison on several different occasions. It was Paul who was often falsely accused. It was Paul who was given 39 stripes on five different occasions. It was Paul who was shipwrecked on three different trips. It was Paul who was hungry and thirsty, cold and naked. It was Paul who had to defend himself before Felix. So if there was anybody that can testify about going through some stressful times, Paul was qualified. Paul told me to share with you this morning that which even though he endured all of this, he still had joy. Uh, Paul wanted me to share with you some things about stressful times. He wanted me to let you understand that God does not protect us to pamper us, but God provides shelter in order that we can be strengthened during the storms of life so that we may encounter our storms with confidence. Storms will come, rain will fall, and disappointments will occur, but you must understand that God is still in control. Dr. Paul is saying that when Christians experience stressful times, we still have hope. Dr. Paul wanted me to share with you three C's and then we out. The first C is we will encounter conflict. Uh, Dr. Paul starts out by asking a question. Can anything or what can separate us from the love of Christ? Please understand he's suggesting God's Jesus love for us and not our love for him. He knows that our love is often conditional. As long as things are going well, we have a job, we have a house, we have a car, we have money in the bank, we got a spouse, children in college, respect, then we have no problem loving God. So he wanted us to get the proper perspective because the love of God is unconditional. Paul wanted us to understand that the difficulties in life are working for us and not working against us. I need to say that again. The difficulties in life are working for us and not against us. You see, God permits trials to come that we may use them for our good. These conflicts that he mentions can and will separate pastors from churches, husbands from wives, parents from children, families from each other, even souls from the body. He wanted us to understand that the love of God was not conditional and that if we experience some conflicts of difficulties, it does not mean that God no longer loves us. Consider the list of conflicts that he mentioned. He mentions trouble. He mentions persecution. He mentions hunger, uh, cold, uh, death, and at least the threat of death. Then he quotes Psalms 44 and 22, reminding us that God's folks have always faced some stressful times, but having God in the midst of these stressful times really makes the difference. Second C, he wanted us to remember that we are more than conquerors. This simply means that we don't win in overtime. We win in regulation. You see, the game is not really that close because we've already won. It, it reminds me of the college football playoffs where Alabama and, and Ohio State had basically won their games by halftime. We always, uh, we are always be engaged in the struggle, but we will emerge victorious. Now, I got to stop right here because this means that many of us live lives in the depths of discouragement when we are more than conquerors. Many of us live a life of defeat when we are more than conquerors. Many of us live below our possibilities when we are more than conquerors. Many of us live a restricted and limited life when we are more than conquerors. Many of us live in the bondage of Satan when we are more than conquerors. Many of us live a deep depression and despair when we are more than conquerors. Many of us are living in a prison camp of being conquered when we are more than conquerors. Well, let me say this. As a conqueror, you cannot allow jealousy to develop in your life. You cannot allow bitterness to spring up 
in your heart. You cannot allow resentment to control your thinking. You cannot allow a poor attitude to ruin your reputation. You cannot allow sin to take root in your soul. You cannot allow hardships to harden and to hinder you. You cannot allow opposition to discourage you. You cannot allow criticism to stop you. You cannot allow difficulties to frustrate you. You cannot allow circumstances to depress you. You cannot allow money to persuade you or Satan to control you. As a conqueror, you may have to encounter a fiery furnace like the Hebrew boys. As a conqueror, you may have to enter the lion's den like Daniel. As a conqueror, you may have to stand for what's right even when it's not popular like Esther. As a conqueror, you may have to go against the tide like Noah. As a conqueror, you may have to walk alone like Enoch. As a conqueror, you may have to spend time alone with God like Moses. As a conqueror, you may have to face strong opposition like Nehemiah. You must understand how we conquer. It's not through, but it's through Jesus. Uh, it's not through physical strength, but it's through Jesus. It's not through worldly wisdom, but it's through Jesus. It's not through human strategy, but it's through Jesus. It's not through powerful manipulation, but it's through Jesus. It's not through determined persistence, but it's through Jesus. It's not through social influence, but it's through Jesus. It's not through powerful communication, but it's through Jesus. And too many of us are defeated champions. We have already won, but we're acting like we've lost. I need to say that again. We are defeated champions where we've already been given the victory, but we are behaving as though we have lost. We must use the game plan that God has already given us and realize that it's through the word of God that gives us the authority we need to be conquerors. It's through the power of God that gives us the strength we need to be conquerors. It's through the spirit of God that gives us the boldness we need to be conquerors. It's through the Son of God that gives us the help we need to be conquerors. It's through the angels of God that gives us the security we need to be conquerors. It's through the gifts of God that gives us the ability we need to be more than conquerors. It's through the saints of God that gives us the encouragement to be more than conquerors. Therefore, we can't allow fear to control us. We can't allow doubts to plague us. We can't allow frustration to torment us. We cannot allow circumstances to harass us. We can't allow temptations to ensnare us. We can't allow sin to destroy us. We can't allow Satan to manipulate us. Well, then the last seat, and I'm out. We've all, we all have the confidence we need because of love. Paul was now compiled another list with more confidence than he had and says, uh, I am convinced. In other words, Paul said there may have been some thought to this. There may have been some doubt before. But after I've been through all of this, there's no doubt in my mind. And whenever there's no doubt in your mind, that means you are now convinced. Is there anybody here that can testify that you know too much about him for you to doubt him? And because of what you've already experienced, you are now convinced. Well, Paul says, I am convinced that death can't separate us from the love of God. That life can't separate us from the love of God. That angels or demons can't separate us from the love of God. That fears of today and worries about tomorrow cannot separate us from the love of God. Even the powers of hell cannot separate us from the love of God, no matter how high or how low, nothing can separate us from the love of God. Trouble, hardship, persecution, hunger, poverty, danger, or even death is able to separate God's love or the love of Jesus from us. Paul is confessing his manifesto that I am convinced that when you have God's love, you have everything you need. Can I tell you about God's love? God's love 
has no flaw or fluctuation. His love has no lack or limit. His love has no impurity or indifference. His love has no prejudice or partiality. It has no imperfection or indulgence. It has no shame or selfishness. God's love is higher than the heavens, deeper than the oceans, lovelier than the sunsets, sweeter than the honeycombs, greater than the universe, stronger than the wind, fresher than the morning dew. His love, I said his love, cannot totally be defined, for it's inexpressible. It cannot be measured, for it's immeasurable. It cannot be described. It's indescribable. It cannot be evaluated. It is invaluable. It cannot be comprehended. It's incomprehensible. It cannot be explained. It's unexplainable. It cannot be exhausted. It is inexhaustible. No other love can bless and benefit, can penetrate and saturate, can glorify and magnify, can revive and restore, can satisfy and beautify, can encourage and inspire, can assure and endure. God's love can transform hard hearts into holy hearts, selfish hearts into sharing hearts, callous hearts into compassionate hearts, proud hearts into pure hearts, greedy hearts into generous hearts, lustful hearts into loving hearts, mean hearts into merciful hearts. Well, as we get ready to face a brand new year, we're three days in and we don't know what's happening. We don't know what's up the road, but the good news is God's love is still on the throne. God's love is still in charge. God's love is still working. Anybody here know something about the love of God? So as we face 2021, we still got hope because God's love is still in operation. Can I tell you about his love? Give me three more minutes. I'm going to tell you about his love. And then I'm out because some of you want to see what's going to happen in week 17 of the NFL football season. His love. I said his love. I get happy when I think about his love. His love is adequate. It's abundant. It's abiding. It's amazing. It's assuring. It's all-inclusive. It's available. It's distinctive. It's delightful. It's deliberate. It's devoted. It's direct. It's discreet. It's dynamic. It's enduring. It's essential. It's expressive. It's effective. It's encouraging, enjoyable, and eternal. His love is faultless. It's fulfilling. It's faithful. It's fabulous. It's flowing. It's friendly. It's free. It's godly. It's generous. It's gratifying. It's gracious. It's gentle. It's great and guaranteed. It's pure. It's priceless. It's perspective. It's patient. It's personal. It's precious. And it's perfect. It's satisfying. It's significant. It's special. It's sacrificial. It's strong. It's sensitive and superb. But most of all, most of all, his love, his love is action. His love is action. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He died on the cross. He died on the cross for your sins, for my sins. But the good news is he did not, he did not, he did not stay dead. 
They buried him in a borrowed tomb. They buried him on a Friday. They put him away on a Friday. But his love, his love, his love kept moving on Friday, on Saturday. And something about his love happened that Sunday morning. He got up. He got up. He got up with all power, all power, all power. Thank you for his love, comforting words in stressful times. God's love is still present. God's love is still available. His love, his love. Anybody here, thank God for his love, his love. Lifted me, his love, lifted me, his love, his love, his love, his love, his love. Thank God for his love. Thank God for his love. Thank God, thank God for his love. Love, love, L O V E, L O. Be love, love, love. His love, his love, his love. If you know something about his love, tell him thank you. Can I go and use the vernacular of my hip hop buddies? If you know his love is real, I want you to do one thing. I want you to wave your hands in the air and wave them like you just don't care. His love, his love, his love, yeah. His love, his love. His love. We gonna make it. We're gonna make it in stressful times. We're gonna make it in tough times because his love has already been there. His love is all around us. His love, it comforts me. His love, it protects me. His love, his love. Be encouraged. Be encouraged during stressful times because no matter what happens, nothing can separate us from the love of God. Not Corona, not Rona, the old strand or the new strand is able to separate us from the love of God. Not the old administration going out or the new administration coming. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. Not the old Congress, not the new Congress. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. Because God's love was action. He died on the cross for your sins. And he died on the cross for my sins. And all you have to do is accept him into your life. And you, too, will have that blessed assurance that Jesus is yours. And you, too, will have that guarantee that nothing can separate you from the love of God. And once you realize that, you, too, can find comforting words for stressful times. May God bless you. May God keep you is our prayer. We are honored 
to, that you share with us today through Cyber GMBC. As we enter this brand new year, we are blessed with the consistent God that is able to bring us through any situation. We pray that your Cyber GMBC experience will connect you to our Cyber GMBC family and may God's blessings rest upon you. We thank you for your giving and pray that you will be a giving disciple. There are various ways to give your tithes and offerings. Bill Pay, Giblify, PayPal, and Zelle. You could also mail them to the church or drop them in the mail slot at 29066 Eaton, Westland, Michigan 48186. Don't forget to like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and follow us on Instagram. We pray that what you have just experienced was a blessing for you and your family. Our prayers go out to those battling COVID-19 on the front line, those that are infected by it, and those whose family members have been claimed by it. May God bless your heart.